Howard Ward. He is Mario Gabelli's right-hand man on growth stocks. He helps manage $36 billion in assets at Gamco. Howard, great to have you back on Street Smart. This has been sort of a year of surprises. We're early on, of course, but uh, I think the reaction often by the market has been surprising. Let's start with China today. Um, showing a slowdown that's much more than people expected, yet the market rallies based on that news. What do you make of it? Well, it's all part of the uh, feeling that the central banks of the world are in an easing mode. And that be starts with the ECB, Japan, the UK, China moving in that direction rapidly. And here in the United States, of course, how much easier can you possibly get? Um, and so it is that, that sense that monetary accommodation is here to stay for quite some period of time that is providing the fuel for some of that. What argument. about the reason for the monetary easing, right? Slowdown is not good. Certainly so many uh, economies now are intertwined, as we've seen. Um, doesn't that worry you a little bit? Well, slowdown in China doesn't necessarily mean uh, no growth. You know, <laughs> we're probably talking about an economy that's slowing from a 9 or 10 percent rate of growth to a 7 to 8 percent rate of growth. So I'm not real worried about that. I mean, clearly in Europe, the, the, we, we all seem to believe that Europe has entered a recession, uh, even though all the numbers aren't out to confirm that yet. You know, let's take that as, as a given. But the biggest economy in the world is right here in the United States. And what's happening here? There appears to be some decoupling from Europe. Our economic mm. news has been getting better for the last 10 weeks. We had a terrific payroll report for December. So that always makes me nervous, though, Howard. I mean, when we talk about decoupling, the reality is the world is a big place, but it is incredibly intertwined. Yep. And all of these economies are intertwined. And let's not forget, our financial system is very much intertwined. That's right. So, yes, the U.S. economy is looking better. We all hope it continues. But a lot of those numbers, let's face it, are backward looking. Yep. When we're trying to invest, we're thinking about the future. And the market's yep. always trying to predict six to nine months out. Do you think Europe's going to be resolved six to nine months from now, at least enough that we can kind of breathe easy and let this U.S. growth continue? Well, I think the, the next 90 days are probably critical. Now, in Europe, they've got to raise about $2 trillion in sovereign debt this year. A lot of the financing is going to happen in the first half of the year. We have to get through that financing. The European Central Bank has made it very clear that the lender of last resort to the European banks, but not to the sovereigns. However, they will lend to the sovereigns either through the banks or, or in the, if they feel that deflation is a risk or that market conditions are unstable, they'll lend directly to the sovereigns. The bottom line is the ECB's balance sheet has been going up one way or another, and that's probably going to continue. That has put pressure on the euro, and it has put gold prices back in, a, in an up mode. And so there is risk in Europe, no question about it. But there's a real chance that we can muddle through here. There's a real chance there is a life raft or a life boat um, for Europe. If push comes to shove in Europe, I do think the ECB will be there. And so we've got some financings. We've clearly got some difficult economic times. But in the meantime, the U.S. The economy meantime, is doing pretty right. well. You know what, and you can make some money, right? I mean, yeah. you, you've so got some follow, ideas on how to make some money. All the payroll, all this money, all the information that comes out about payrolls. It's all about jobs. If we keep growing jobs, our economy is going to keep pushing forward. And so every Thursday at 8.30 in the morning, check those weekly unemployment claims. And every Friday, the first Friday of every month, check those monthly payroll reports. If those payrolls are growing, right, our economy is going to do okay. What do I buy? Let's get to your shopping list. I know that sure. energy is a sector that you're looking at. Yes, I like energy. You know, the United States is the biggest consumer of oil on a global basis. So as our economy does better, we're going to consume more. And of course, they're pretty thirsty for this stuff over in China, too, as well as other places. So I think that they're, I'm a long-term bull on oil. The two companies that have amongst the highest growth in earnings this year in the energy sector are Schlumberger and EOG. Schlumberger in the oil service area, earnings should grow about 30 percent this year. EOG, which is both oil and natural gas, all domestic, should grow earnings in excess of, of 30 percent this year. So I like those two names uh, quite a bit. ConocoPhillips would be a name to buy as a breakup play. This is a restructuring story. They're going to separate the refining and marketing from their exploration and production. And there's probably some substantial upside when that happens. That's what you saw with Marathon. But is Conoco Marathon? Conoco is obviously not Marathon, but Conoco's assets, I think, are underappreciated. It has amongst the highest return on capitals in the integrated oil business. I think people are going to be surprised with that stock. I also like technology. Technology, large cap technology stocks haven't been this cheap in a generation. Uh, Apple, for example, 
uh, has a 10% free cash flow yield. Microsoft a 13% free cash flow yield. Microsoft has $60 billion in cash, the 13% free cash flow yield, a 3% dividend, nine times earnings. What's not to like about that? <laughs> That is a cheap stock. Google, again, 8% free cash flow. You have lots of free cash here. The capacity to pay dividends. If Apple, which generates $30 billion a year in free cash flow, decides to give the shareholders $10 billion of that, right. they can keep 20, they keep the 80 billion that's on their balance sheet, that 10 billion will generate a 2.5% dividend yield for All the right, investor. All right, Howard, I apologize, we gotta interrupt there and uh, we shall see. That will be quite a story if Apple decides to pay a dividend. Thanks so much, always great to speak to you. Howard Ward of Gampo.